Let's start with a short meditation today uh, to bring us back to our senses. This is really my go-to meditation during the day. Whenever I find that the story has grabbed my attention and that I am not holding it loosely, but instead holding it very tightly, and I'm kind of lost in thought about what does that mean and what should I do? And if I'm either like, if I notice my thoughts are in the past or the future, which is where all thoughts are, really, when we're in the present, we're not really thinking, we're here, we're moving from intuition, we're experiencing the our being. When I notice that I'm lost in thought and I'm thinking thoughts about the future, I'm trying to, you know, figure something out about the past. It, uh, this is really where I go. This is what, this is what always brings me back to the present. Uh, let me start that. I want to go to participant view. There we go. Make sure everybody's here. Okay. Ah. Let's take a few deep breaths together. Just letting our attention move to the breath. And if you like, you can close your eyes or leave them open. If you want to leave them open, I find it usually helps just to gaze down at the floor in front of you and let your focus loosen. And just feel your feet on the floor. The sensations of the bottom of your feet touching the floor. Just allowing attention to go right there. And allowing attention to just move up the legs a little bit. Feeling the calves and the knees, sensing in to any sensations in the body and the calves and the knees. And continuing up to the thighs and the hips, sensing the sensations of your bottom touching the chair. And if you get lost in thought, or the story starts to wander in, or there's commentary, am I doing this right? That's okay. We can always just gently bring our attention back to the breath, or to the last place in the body where we had our attention. And allowing attention to move up to the belly, noticing any sensations in the belly. Is there tension? Just seeing if we can breathe in a little relaxation and breathe out any tension we might find. Moving up to the solar plexus, and the rib cage, healing into any sensations there. And the shoulders, 
the upper arms, the elbows, the wrists, and the hands. Now, sensing in to the neck, noticing if there's any tension there. And again, seeing if you can breathe in relaxation. Let the tension go as you breathe out. And finally, the face, the back of the head, the ears, the temples, and the top of the head. Just sensing into the sensations, letting attention fully be there with the sensations. Now, just envisioning in any way that works best for you, a golden light flowing down from above you, down over and through your head, over and through your shoulders and your chest and your belly and your legs and your feet, like a golden honey light almost, just taking away any tension in the body. And now seeing if you can simply allow attention to return to rest. Not focusing attention on thoughts or sensations. It may help to visualize taking a step back from attention. Simply being aware of the one who is aware. Sensing into this peace that's always here. Before attention moves, it's simply awareness, aware of itself, and everything around it without any need to move, to use the mind to go out to an object, creating a subject, simply allowing subjects and objects to dissolve into the awareness at rest. And as we practice coming back to this awareness, taking that step backward from attention, we start to cultivate an ability to sense into this at any time. In times of stress, anxiety, 
when we feel like we're overthinking or caught in a thought storm, we can see that this peace, this awareness, it's always here, always available to us. It is the unknown. It is what we step into on the hero's journey. It is completely empty and yet pregnant with all possibility. It's our connection to our own living truth and to the present. Always in the unknown. The paradox of the deep peace of the unknown. When you are ready, wiggle your fingers and toes and open your eyes. Um, so, the holidays are upon us, and there, <laughs> there can be some stress and expectations that arise during the holidays uh, that can very quickly bring us back into our story in a way that it seems very real, and it's all about many, many holidays past, the things that were perfect that aren't perfect now, or the things that weren't perfect that we hope will be perfect now, or other people's expectations that we wish they would not put on us, but we fe still feel like we can't let go of them. And that's just a few examples of how the holidays can really get under our skin. And when we can bring this present moment awareness, this, this stepping back into simple awareness, not attenuating our awareness out to the story, to other people, um, to our thoughts, because really that's what attention is, right? Attention means to attenuate, to stretch our awareness outward to a thing. So if I am putting my attention on my story, I am stretching awareness to that thing. And in that act of attending, I'm creating a subject and an object and I'm creating separation and the capacity for resistance and for defining myself and my story. And it just becomes this, the beginning of what can be uh, a, a journey into identifying with our situation rather than coming from our own intuition, from our own authenticity, because we feel off center. We don't have that sense of peace to, to allow a natural response to arise from. So we go to reactions based on this thing that we're creating with our attention, which is ourself in this situation. And I know that for me, often in the holidays, the self that I would create was this two-sided self of like this, the kid who, who, Oh, probably only had a few years of holidays that were just perfect and like oh if only it was like that again and the adult who was like how dare you put these expectations on me and I'm not a child anymore and so I was at war with myself in these uh, holiday gatherings for many years and then deep grief came in a holiday season 20 
two years ago when my little brother died five days before Christmas. And that brought a whole nother level of story that felt so real. It doesn't feel at all like story anymore. When grief hits with that kind of contrast of everyone going happy holidays and wearing elf hats and all, all you want to do is crawl up curl up into a ball and wait for it to be June. It's really, it's the, it's as strong as story gets and it's as difficult as it gets to, to see what's here now, because sometimes the pain can be so intense that we're sure the way out is resistance. Nope, I gotta fix this. This is wrong, this is bad, this shouldn't have happened. Um, I need to find a way to get happy again. Uh, I, and, and also the, the anger and resentment to other people, oh, how dare you? You know, you don't know me. It, it just becomes this multi-sided story that we're, all, we're propping up with our attention and our attention to our thoughts about it to what we're creating about what's happening. And the way through that is always that step, that mindful step into the unknown. And the unknown is that awareness at rest. So as we cultivate that coming back to awareness at rest, and if you didn't have any experience of that during this meditation, that's okay. This can take time to, to really start to loosen the story that, that keeps us from that. I mean, literally the story becomes, oh, I'm not even, I can't even get this. You know, for, for many years, that was how my approach to this was experienced. But here's the thing. As we come back to it, we realize that we can always be with our own present moment experience in any moment. And that that is the path. That is what teaches us who we are. That is what reveals the awareness that is always here. I think in the Bible, they called it the peace that passeth all understanding. And that's available to us in any moment. And the heart of what we're doing here, combining mindfulness and the hero's journey, is going to that peace as the place to move from. So if we're, if we're there in the present, we're able, life is able to unfold as a as a natural response of who we authentically are to the present moment. Yes, we can still plan and have goals. And of course, that's, and that's why all those things are in the, the coaching journey too. But at the heart of it, it's about intention and surrender. And the surrender is the surrender to the unknown, to seeing that that is the way forward and that it will always reveal the path. It won't always look like we want it to. We can't always just manifest the thing we want, thinking that if I just get more of what I want, then I'll be happier and I won't feel the way I feel. And that's really what I need. Yet we are manifesting as we stand there authentically in the unknown. We are allowing who we are to create what is. And we're also allowing others to do the same. And we are, we are providing a beacon for others for their own authenticity. Going into a holiday gathering, authentically and peacefully, you'll be surprised it will change the whole gathering. 
it, it may not, you know, like may not change it as much as you'd like. And it, it may not make it the most, you know, like perfect, but it really becomes a way for others to, to sense that peace as well. So that's not just a gift we bring ourselves. That's a gift we bring to everyone around us and everyone who's not around us. It, it, I, I'm convinced that it just ripples out throughout the universe and makes a difference, reduces the amount of illusion, suffering in the world, delusion. So that's really what I uh, what I really wanted to to focus on this week with uh, these next two weeks with the holiday challenge because we've got two weeks of holidays coming up Christmas and New Year's and Hanukkah I guess Hanukkah's over now um, and and whatever winter holidays you celebrate um, there are challenges right so as we want to move through those challenges it's good to know kind of what's coming you know go okay this could be stressful let's let's be on the lookout for if that happens and see that attention has gone to the story to reaction and when we come back to the senses when we come back to the present we can take our reaction and turn it into a response that comes naturally and authentically from who we are, not from who we think we are in this off base mind identified self that's ready for fight or flight, you know? Um, and we wanna look at what our expectations are because it's easy to have expectations around the holidays because it's just a part of most of our conditioning. You know, we grew up with expectations around the holidays and they, they don't just fall away because you know they're there, you know? So it, it's helpful to go, oh yeah, this is that. Hmm. And to be, again, curiosity, gentleness, compassion for ourself and others. Then we can see, okay, you can, we can be compassionate with ourselves about our own expectations and the expectations of others. Why aren't you doing it this way? Why aren't you home for Christmas? Why didn't you this? Why don't you that? We can have compassion for that. And the overwhelm, you know, it's it can be really difficult just to go, you know, from party to party or from, or, or it can be overwhelming to not have those things, to not have family. Just the feelings of loneliness, of, our own experience at the holidays can just be more intense and can be overwhelming. And that's where we need to, again, be gentle with ourselves, find ways, take breaks. If you just need to do something for yourself, like go see a movie or go take a walk or whatever it is that, that will allow you to not feel so overwhelmed, remember to take time to do that. And it doesn't have to always be mindfulness because sometimes like, oh God, mindfulness again, oh, that can become its own stress. Don't ever let that happen. If you have other coping mechanisms, the holidays are a time to use them as long as they're somewhat healthy. <laughs> but you know, you want to have an extra eggnog and brandy, help yourself if that's going to help, you know, be gentle with yourself. Uh, Maybe not the whole bottle of brandy, but you can have the whole bottle of eggnog. <laughs> um, and then grief at the holidays. It, it has a special poignancy. It comes with new knives around the holidays and the pain can be intense. And that's okay. That's okay. Pain isn't, the pain isn't the problem. The suffering is what we create from the pain. And we create that by running to our thoughts to fix the pain. So we put our attention on our thoughts 
And the pain is what drives that. And that's where we can really create deep suffering. That's where we can create those deep, dark places that we think we'll never get out of. Because that's the story we tell ourselves. I can't handle this. I will never get out of this. Christmas will never be good again. Every, I mean, I, I did that for so many years after my brother died. I know what that's like. I also know what it's like to turn around and look at that pain and to be with it and to go through it and to see that it isn't just the pain. There is also love. There is also joy. There is also that peace that's always there, even in our deepest grief and our worst pain. And as we come back to that experience of who we are in the unknown, come back to our senses, we start to see that, oh, it's like there was this uh, Star Trek Next Generation episode where the, the Borg came and they were going to assimilate everyone. And they said, resistance is futile. And it really is. All the resistance we put into not feeling our feelings or trying to think our way around them or make them into something else that we can manage and fix. And there are times for that. There sure are. And that can be a step towards healing. And that's what therapists do. And that's, that is fine and great work. And if you need that, take advantage of it. But ultimately, even then, when we let go of whatever story we've that's taken us from the deepest, darkest place and, and brought us some peace, we still can take that last step to letting go of that story, to letting go of our hold on that story, of making the story reality and looking to our present experience for what reality is. And so this week's challenge basically was just to, to kind of remind us all that, yeah, this is a tough time. These are the, these are the things that will be coming up for all of us most likely. And uh, to be here for ourselves, to be here for each other here in the community and to be there for our loved ones uh, if they're going through the same thing, you know? Um, because there are a lot of people approaching the holidays with none of this realization <laughs> just like spinning and, you know, not just creating their own suffering, but really creating the suffering for others. And we can be there with compassion for them and acceptance and, uh, and support them as well. <laughs> 